Hey guys, we started on our login form in the last video and we can type stuff in here and we're keeping track of the state. And then when I hit submit, I can see what the values of my email and password are. In this video, we're gonna take the next step and when I hit submit, it's actually gonna send a mutation um, to our server and log the user in. So let's get started on that. So to do this, what we're gonna do is add a login mutation on our server and we are going to basically be using a uh, authentication um, methods that I have created in a previous basically project and what we're going to be adding is this try login so I'm going to copy this right here and we're going to paste it into an auth.js file on our server now I'm going to go over what each one of these methods does and we're going to be, we already have Lodash and Bcrypt. We just need JSON web token. So I'm going to say yarn add JSON web token. Okay. So try login is going to be um, where we actually, basically, the resolver we're going to run. And this is to attempt to log in the user. So we have an email, a password, and then a secret. And secret's important, which we'll talk about that in, in a second. So first we try to find a user. We're finding a user um, with the given email. So if we can't find the user based on their email here, they don't exist, we can just throw an error. So that's throw a new error here. But actually before I go through this auth, I wanna create the schema with you guys so it makes more sense. So I'm gonna create a login mutation where it takes a email which is a string and a password which is a string and it returns something and what do I want to return um, I'm gonna call this login response so it's gonna be okay which is a boolean and similar before we're gonna show any errors that might pop up while doing this and then also um, we're gonna put two things um, a token which is a string and oops I forgot this can be errors and token can be nullable token and then refresh token and that's what we're going to return login response now token and refresh token are JSON web tokens which are basically a long string that we can put data into so when we call try login here, we're gonna attempt to log the user in. And now, in this example, I was throwing an error, but I don't really wanna throw an error. If this happens, what I wanna do is I wanna return okay is equal to false, and errors is equal to path email, and oops, message email not found. Error no user with this email exists or something like that and then here the next thing we try to do is we found a user with their email so they gave us a valid email we want to make sure they gave us a valid password so here is where we use bcrypt and this is a async function um, because bcrypt compare is asynchronous so we're going to wait the response and notice how our first one is our password this is plain text um, and user.password is our hash so what bcrypt will do is they'll go ahead and hash the password here um, and compare whether this password is the same as this password that's hashed for us and then it's going to give us a boolean back of whether it's valid if it's not valid we know we got a bad password so we're gonna, instead of throwing an error again, we're gonna do this. Return back to our user. And the reason why I'm putting this um, in an auth.js file is because we're gonna be using this in possibly other places. So path, this is gonna be password, and we can just say wrong password. Now you notice we're giving um, the user information about whether their password was wrong or whether their email was wrong. Um, you know, we could just say uh, wrong email. That's pre that's simple. Wrong email or wrong password. You don't have to do this. You could just return invalid invalid login. 
so you don't tell the user whether it's an email or a password it kind of just depends on how much information you want to tell the user now next thing we're going to do is the user has successfully logged in if they've made it past these two if statements we know they gave us a good password and a good email and we're what we want to do is we want to create their uh, JWT token because they're good to go um, and then we can just go ahead and create their tokens and return those and now we're going to say OK is true too and so I'm going to go over how this create tokens works in a second but let's talk about how we're going to actually call this try login so in my resolvers over here my user resolver I'm going to import try login from off and then down here after it could be before register we're going to say login parent args and args here is an email and a password and we have models and then we're going to call try login and that's what's going to get returned whatever the, the return value of try login is so we need to pass email password models in a secret so email password models and then also a secret so where are we going to get this secret well the secret is used for our JWT tokens and we're going to pass that in from our context so that's how we're going to call this so now in our function over here or in our uh, basically our main server class I'm just going to up here say const secret is equal to something um, that's the va secret value I'm going to create and it's just a random string value now we can pass this in that way we can use it in our resolver now try login let's go over how this create tokens is working so when we create a token we're gonna get two things back first a token which is gonna be look like something like this there's gonna be some periods in it and same with refresh token and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna store a ID in this string and it's basically crypt cryptic signed cryptically signed um, um, that way what's gonna happen is only people that know our secret are able to decode this well anyone can decode it but basically verify it so we are the only one who can issue tokens here and we go into this create tokens function we can see and we'll talk about how refresh tokens work later but this is how you create them and this is actually synchronous so I'm gonna just change this I had this wrong before so create token and create refresh token Okay. so you'll notice how for create token I'm doing a signature I'm passing in the secret and we also need to pass in a second secret which we'll do in a second so I'm gonna pass um, two secrets one for our refresh token and one for our token and we want this to be different and I'm going to talk about how we're going to choose the secret for a refresh token because I'm going to do it in a kind of a special manner and we're also passing in the user in so from our user we are selecting some fields here I was selecting the is admin field but we don't have that so we really only care about the ID um, and what we could do is we could just actually pass no this is fine um, so we're picking only the ID field from this user object and passing it and that's what we're storing in the token so it should be an object that has it looks something like this I'll have an object which has a user which has an ID of like two or something and so whenever the user makes a request what we're going to tell them to do is they have to send in their JWT token and we'll I'll show you how to do that on react and then we'll identify the user based on this token and this stored ID and then this expires in a minute now this expires really fast we don't actually need to have this expire that quickly um, because we're not storing any like sensitive data in our JWT token that will change so I'm gonna say like 20 minutes um, you know let's give an hour why not this is something though you can increase the time 
on um, or shorten you really want to shorten this if there's anything sensitive in here that, that changes a lot so if I was having something in here like is admin where if I want to be able to revoke the admin privileges I don't want them to be an admin for a whole hour so I'm gonna to have to change that so this is basically how long you want to give them access for um, and then they can refresh if they need to that's what the point of this refresh token is and that's um, seven days okay so these tokens um, expire and so we need to user.refresh token okay so I was storing um, the refresh secret in the user table but for this um, what I'm going to do is use secret 2 which we're going to pass you know what? we're going to pass as a parameter so it's going to come in here so we're going to have we'll create a second secret and I'm going to do a little trick that I like to do is say const refresh token secret is equal to user dot password and then also we're just gonna you know we're just gonna add them together let's just do a plus secret two now the reason why I'm basically putting this user dot password at the front and this is the hash of the password instead of just using the um, secret two is this way the token will automatically expire if the password here changes so if the user changes their password I don't want them to stay logged in so this will automatically expire it so let's pass in a second secret and in the index here I'm going to create another one and put some more random characters and we'll hop down here secret two sweet and so this should be all good to go now our back end and our tokens look pretty good they're gonna expire after an hour or this token and our refresh token last seven days I'm gonna talk more in depth about how these guys the tokens work in the next video we're just gonna get this set up um, in this video so now this is all good let's try running this well, let's first actually make sure I have the server up yep I have a server up and no errors so I'm gonna go to localhost um, I think I have it on 8081 let's go to graphical mutation login email and man I actually don't think there's I don't, I don't remember if I created any users so I'm actually just going to register a new user real quick so let's call him Tony123 and his email is going to be Tony123 at abc.com and let's copy that to use this and password Tony Tony and let's just see whether it's okay or not all right created it okay so now let's log in email password and let's see if it's okay and we're gonna get the token refresh token errors ID or sorry Pack a message. Okay. All right. So this worked, and here's what our token looks like, and a refresh token. Now I'll show you all the errors that we get. So, bad email. We see our token refresh token are null, and it says wrong email. So now we can fix that and give a wrong password. Now we get wrong password. Cool. So that is all set up and looking nice. So now on our front end, let's go ahead and uh, call this. So we're just going to say email. So we're going to add some variables here because that's how we need to do it on our front end. And that's going to be a string as well. And pass the email here and password here. And we're just going to copy this. And 
I'm gonna go to my front end over here and come over to login and I'm gonna say const login mutation is equal to GQL and paste that guy in. So that's what we're gonna use. Let's go ahead and import that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this observer that we have and put that down here. So I'm gonna say export default, GraphQL, and now I'm gonna pass in the login mutation. And now I'm gonna be passing in both the observer and the uh, class we have up here. So the class we have here is login. And I see the colors a little bit off here. So I think I did a typo somewhere. But let's look at what's wrong with that in a second. Notice how I'm doing observer here. This is a higher order component that wraps login, and then GraphQL wraps that higher order component. So you can nest these. And you could do observer on the outside, but I think it's better to do GraphQL on the inside, but I'm not quite sure what uh, exactly which one's the best. I'm thinking observer um, first because the observer is going to be changing more. Uh, than GraphQL is, so I don't want to pass it through two components, just one. Okay, where did I mess up that this is not colored? Export default. Um, here's compiled successfully, so that looks like it worked. I'm guessing just this line right here. Oops. Looks like it's just a little bug. Let's see if it's, nope, syntax error. Expected name found in the file. I'm guessing it's missing. All right, I'm gonna comment this guy out. All right, that seems to work. It should say it doesn't know what login mutation is, good. Huh. Okay, so notice I went red for a second. I thought it was working. Huh. I think I think here's what I'm gonna try doing. I'm gonna get rid of login mutation and see if this works. So I got rid of the GraphQL. Okay, that works. I jam and I'm importing GQL. I must be doing something super silly. I thought I've done this before. I mean, we can go see what, how I do in register. This looks like the exact same, and that looks good. So, so you notice how the coloration changes? I'm gonna try copying my register and see if that works. Yep, that works just fine. So I'm gonna copy the inside of my mutation here. Maybe I have an error in my, do I just have an error in the GraphQL? If I come to GraphQL, I can go ahead and run this. Prettify it. Looks like all the curly braces line up and stuff. Oh, I see, we're missing a curly brace, that's all. My bad. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just undo everything. This whole time I was just missing a curly brace. Funny how that caused that, all that problems. You would have thought that this was a string and it would not affect anything. Okay. So let's log in with our Tony Man, I forgot what my username was already. Let's control Z this. Here we go, Tony ABC. And Tony Tony. Oh, you know what? Hold that. 
we're not calling this mutation yet. So an on submit on this dot, so we're gonna say const response is equal to await this dot props dot mutate. And then we're gonna pass in our variables that we get here. And then in our response, we should get a um, token back if we get it right. And so I will then save that to local storage if it works. Okay, what went? Oh, I didn't. I wasn't console logging response, so we can see what it looked like. We can see the shape of the object. So paste that in, Tony. Tony. All right, so that worked. So uh, data login refresh token token. So we're gonna say const OK refresh token and token is equal to this dot. Nope, it's in our response. Dot data dot login. So if it's OK, then we're gonna say local storage dot set item token is equal to token and refresh token is going to be equal to a refresh token so let's give that a run and the way you can tell tokens is here so you can see I already have some stuff in my uh, local storage I'm gonna just go ahead and clear this out so when I hit submit, if we do a good username and password, we will see our tokens stored here. So Tony, and so real quick, application storage, local storage 3000. Okay, so Tony, Tony. All right, cool, so now it worked okay. So now we see our both our tokens here. So the nice thing is local storage will store these here and they will persist. So if I refresh the page, um, they will still be here, even though the values here get changed. We still see refresh, hey, our values are still here. So now when I go to make requests on other parts of the website, I can tell whether someone's logged in, whether they have a token in their local storage, and then I can use this token on my server side. So what we're gonna be doing in the next video um, well, I don't actually know if we're doing the next video, but uh, very soon is we're going to make some routes. So, for example, team. We have a create team um, resolver, but we only want you to create a team if you're logged in. We don't want random people creating teams, right? So here what we're going to do is we're going to check whether they give us a valid token. And if they do, we know they're logged in. If not, we know they're not, and they're not. they're possibly not a user. So we ignore them. So that's how we're going to do authentication. Um, we'll get more in depth in the next video when uh, we'll handle some errors here from the front end in case we do a bad. So here's a bad username and password. We're not really doing anything with errors right now. So we'll handle the errors in the next video. And we'll also talk about more auth stuff for logging in. So that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. And the code will be up on GitHub.